That's awkward hitting that button. But we are live now at the second episode in our remote office here for the Bookly Podcast. And quick introduction. You are my number one fan. <laughs> <You're> the, <laughs> the only person who has listened to every episode of the podcast so far. Really? For sure. I think so. I, a lot of people listen to most of them. Mm-hmm. But I don't think anybody except for you that I've heard of has listened to all of them. Yeah, it's like my favorite Wednesday like thing. Yeah, and they're like a little late to post. I'm always like, excuse me. Where's Wait, my they're podcast? late to post. There was one that was like a little late, and the only reason I know is because which one? Because I schedule them all out like three days in advance for the oh, time really? seven a.m. I'll text you next time that happens. Yeah, that piss me right off. Because <laughs> we drive to gymnastics like usually right when they post, so like I know. Do you need them to be posted earlier? Because I I do seven a.m. Mountain Standard. I could do. No, no, no. That's good. Oh no, that's like wicked early in Alaska. Yeah. Just <laughs> kidding. Yeah, never we're mind. Totally. Good. I'm thinking it was two hours the other direction. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, I don't know. think you've ever seen that side of the clock. <laughs> Five a.m. <laughs> Not on purpose. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. But in addition to being my number one fan, you're also my sister. Mm. Less exciting, but, <laughs> but <laughs> wow. But also pretty cool Thank for you. you. <laughs> um, and. <laughs> Really hyping me up to do this. <laughs> I know, I know. But you're my only older sibling. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And we are, I mean, we were about as close as you can get physically without being twins, like <laughs> well, mom and dad. Like, unless you're my kids. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You you, you went up to mom and dad. But we're only 11, 12, 13. <laughs> you got there. <laughs> you can count, though. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 13 months apart. Yeah. So, yeah, we basically grew up together like, yeah. through everything. Yeah. I think I don't, I don't think I ever really thought of you as my little brother growing no. up. So. No, and I don't think I ever thought of you as my older sister. Yeah, no respect. None. <laughs> I think that's, that's exactly what I meant. <laughs> but no, like we had all the same friends. We did everything together all growing up. So I was like, super excited yeah. to have I am super excited to have you on the podcast. Well, I'm glad to be here. And, like I'm, books. and I was talking to Rob, and I think we're going to try to do a remote from your guys' house because he has a mm-hmm. mic. Yeah, yeah, he And does. so hopefully we can have both of you guys on a little bit more mm-hmm. frequently. That would be fun. So, yeah. And yeah, maybe some other people from Alaska, but we'll have to do it at your house. So yeah. I'm just going to commandeer your guys' <laughs> house. It's like a remote studio if it works cool, out. Cool, cool. I'll charge you rent. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have no, you don't yeah. charge. Yeah. Sweet, sweet, sweet. I'll just add that to the list of bills for the Bookway podcast. <laughs> awesome. But you have definitely been in the family, the one who's read the most. I mean, I think, I mean, outside of me trying this, mm-hmm. I was the worst. <laughs> then Adam didn't read a whole yeah, lot. Yeah, I think you guys probably tied, to yeah. be honest. And then, I mean, I, honestly, <laughs> I, I really was read. about to say, it's a pretty rough Because <laughs> Reagan never really read either. No, she claims she does, but I don't... Well, she does now. Does she really? No, she actually does. Okay. Like, I've seen her Kindle. She just doesn't want to claim that she reads because she doesn't want people asking her about it. Oh, okay. Which she's going to love that I just said that on the podcast. I know, because Olivia's always like, she never reads the book club book. No. It like she, drives Olivia she, slightly nuts. And I can say that because she doesn't listen to the podcast <laughs> either. Yeah, no, Reagan hates book clubs, so she probably won't find her on the podcast. Yeah, no, but, I know that. So Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't know if she read or not. But apparently she reads now. Mm-hmm. But growing up, I don't think she read at all. Matthew no. never read at all. Mom claims that we all read. I think she's delusional. She read to us and I definitely listened but I don't know that y'all listened I definitely did not because the only book that I remember growing up is Shackleton and I said that what about Uncle Tom um, Uncle Tom's cabin I couldn't tell you (laughs) one thing that happened that was like an influential one for me but that's we did like puzzles and it's not even called Shackleton it's called Endurance (laughs) Endurance or something something like that but yeah the only one that ever I remember Mm. so I don't know but you definitely read the most so what kind of books do you like to read um Definitely historical fiction is my yeah. go-to favorite. You and Olivia, yeah. two peas in a pod. Yeah, except she likes scary books too. So She likes some scary books. Yeah. I don't like scary at all. I like, like What books would you say that are scary that she likes? I was about to say, she's kind of a wimp for scary. I mean, I don't know. Gone Girl? That one's not scary. I, I don't like suspenseful. Wow. So like, Gone I, Girl, you know exactly what happens. Oh, well, not exactly, but you know the players the whole time. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just I don't know, have you ever scary, read a historical. scary book? Um, I read what was the Agatha Christie we read? And then there were none. No, but I'm reading that one right now because you guys talked about it. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, no, we read a different one, and it I think it was her first book she read or wrote. Oh, Olivia said that one wasn't great. Yeah, it was. It was okay. It wasn't like enthralling, and because of that, it wasn't like scary. You know. Yeah. And so, 
Um, well, and then there were not as not scary either. <laughs> Just <laughs> FYI, I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't classify I... <laughs> that as thriller or scary at all. I would classify that as like cozy murder mystery, oh, like psych. Because those know? two words go together so frequently. Well, I mean like psych, you know what I mean? Like the TV show. Yeah, there were many episodes of psych I couldn't watch. Oh my gosh. Still don't really watch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you yeah. should You should try a Stephen King book. I actually added The Green Mile. Is that yeah. what it was? Yeah, yeah, but that one's not scary. Even well, all. that's why I picked it. <laughs> yeah. You should try that one. And if you do like that one, you should try Misery next. Isn't that one scary? It's kind of scary, but it's not like, it's not super scary. It's more like just crazy. It's a mm. cool, like not cool story. <laughs> cool story <laughs> is not the way to describe that. But it was good. You okay. should try those too. Okay, Tell maybe next story. October. I <laughs> <to> Frank- <laughs> next October. Maybe in a year I might try it. I read Frankenstein. Not, I mean, Frankenstein's kind of scary. I liked that one a lot. I actually read it twice and I have two copies of it at our house. That one's kind of scary, actually. Yeah, I liked that one. That one's so good, though. It's, like, more, like, psychological. Like, I feel like the scary parts weren't drug out super long. Mm. Or, like... I feel like that's most books, though. That's kind of what I'm learning. Like, even... Oh, really? Even The Shining, which is supposedly one of the scariest books mm-hmm. ever written, I would say I was never, like... I mean, I was scared for a little bit of it, but it was more, like... It's not like movies, you know? There's no jump scares. You yeah. can't jump scare them. Well, and like the music isn't there. Yeah, anything. exactly. Yeah. Like, like they have to just scare you with the situation. Yeah. So it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more to handle. I still don't want yeah. to anything, any part of any scary movie. Yeah. But the books honestly weren't terrible. Hmm. Well, maybe next October. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so historical fiction is world war ii your your go-to jam because that's Olivia. yeah yeah and like i kind of hate saying that because i feel it's like super basic but um i branch out definitely i don't really love like wild wild west like pioneer time that yeah. kind of is like annoying for some reason i one of my favorite books is that time period ironically but um i like world war ii and world war one a lot okay so. Yeah, I mean, those are pretty significant times mm. in American history, or in, like, history in general. Yeah. So it's pretty easy to make a pretty dramatic book yeah, out of that. exactly. You know there's I mean? a lot of stories, and I, I find it fascinating that they're, like, I mean, there's just so many incredible stories that came out of that time period, and mm-hmm. so it's always interesting. But also, um, I find it shocking how many of the stories are actually kind of similar, too. I find yeah. that, and so, I don't know. I like those. I like nonfiction a lot too. I just am really picky because I get really ir- irritated with authors that think they know a lot and then just repeat like the same thing over and over. Okay. So, so. kind of branching off from that <laughs> right into the book. So this week's book is Soul of an Octopus, mm-hmm. which I chose one because I wanted to talk about animals with you and mm-hmm. kind of the, the, what you're planning on doing with your family, but mm-hmm. also because of my octopus teacher. I loved that documentary and octopus are just super super cool what did you think about the book well can we hear the baby in this um i don't know probably not but if you do need to handle her we can pause it real quick like if you want to go check on rob real quick i don't know he'll come out (laughs) he'll come out (laughs) yeah okay um okay so like i just said i feel like well not even i feel like she repeated a lot of the same facts over and over again yeah. Which for like an elementary school student would be really helpful, but uh, it was super annoying. Yeah. And so um, I feel like, I don't know. I I read another book that was kind of similar, like naturalist person writing about like a specific animal. It was called The Sound of a Wild Snail Eating, which is like all about just like a common snail. It was fascinating, but it was only like 80 pages. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this book could have been done well in 80 pages and yeah. like not have to learn about her whole like scuba journey and stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. The scuba part, I didn't understand at all, like why that was included. No. So for everybody, this book is, I mean, it's, it's about octopus, but it's a nonfiction book about a lady who kind of gets introduced to octopus. Well, and right off the bat, I'll say this right now. I learned something in the first 30 seconds of this book, mm-hmm. which was that it's not actually octopi. That is completely incorrect. It is octopuses, <laughs> which, which is so just fun to say into a microphone. <laughs> is just so weird. But apparently octopus is a Greek word. Mm-hmm. And you can't make a plural from a Greek word with a 
A Latin I. A Latin ending. Yeah. And so you have to add the S. Mm -hmm. And so it's octopuses. But then I was doing some research and apparently the word octopi has been like accepted as like mm -hmm. a, an alternative, technically not correct, but it is a word now. Yeah. Just like, you know. Super fetch. Yeet and skeet <laughs> yeah. and all the lit, you know, are all now actual words, even yeah. though they mean like nothing. Yeah. Um, octopi is now one of those words. Mm -hmm. But not if you want to be, yeah, if you want to be technically grammatically correct, yeah. it's octopuses. So weird. <laughs> Still can't that get over threw it. Threw <laughs> me off the whole book. I was like, this is just weird. Mm -hmm. But I, and I don't even know where I was going with that before this. Oh, but yeah, I, where was I? Just the, like the first two minutes, I feel like was jammed packed with like interesting information that I oh yeah had never heard of before. Yeah, and so she's introduced to octopuses for the first time. I mean, obviously she knows what they are, but she goes to an aquarium and she starts. She has a friend that takes her, and she starts getting more and more involved with them. And then it's about her journey with like three different octopuses at mm -hmm. this aquarium. And then also like her journey in the wild and what she's learned throughout this whole period. Now, some of the stories were really interesting. Mm -hmm. The scuba ones were not, which was like a good third of the book was, was like a long part was like her getting scuba certified mm -hmm. and how her ears hurt. And I was like, honestly, lady. I, I'm scuba certified, actually. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I and took it as a college credit. Same. It's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would get if your ears hurt. Yeah. But at the yeah. same time, I'm like... But they teach you how to do that. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, don't... maybe if it was colder water. It was pretty warm water when I did it. I don't know. I don't know why it would have hurt. But all I know is that I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> that was what I knew. So, like, that part was awful. I felt like some of the experiences with, like, the employees were good. And some weren't, mm -hmm. you know, like for me, I felt like a lot of it was trying to add to the book. Whereas I think there could have been more factual stuff about the mm -hmm. book. So like the factual parts about like learning about octopuses was really cool. Yeah. Like she talks about a lot of things that mm -hmm. I had no idea about. Yeah. I even liked the parts when she would spin off and talk about like squids or like other animals. Those mm -hmm. were interesting. And I feel like she could have done that more. Mm -hmm. And then cut out her personal stuff a little bit more, which sounds so I mean, mean. I mean, add some of it. Yeah. You know, like, I really liked the story. So the, like, there's, you know, definitely multiple characters within this book that benefit from kind of their relationship with the, the aquarium animals. You know, mm -hmm. like, there's a kid who's, like, severely autistic who mm -hmm. comes in and, like, his experiences and, like, his relationship with animals I thought was super cool. The girl who lost her friend mm -hmm. to suicide and how like animals helped her get through that part. So I felt like it was important to the story. Mm -hmm. I just felt like it was too, I don't know, too much mm -hmm. of the story. Yeah, I agree. So I don't know. But as far as like what you knew about Octopus before we start, did you have any prior knowledge no I've never did they even, blow you away i have never even watched my octopus teacher what well because everyone else was watching it so i just was a stick in the mud and was like i'm not gonna watch it you're too cool i just i don't know i was like octopuses aren't that cool octopuses are so cool <laughs> yeah well now i think they're super cool like really i knew nothing i don't even think it really dawned on me to be honest that they like change color i don't know why that didn't like that was just nothing that I... That Not just stuck. change color. They change shape. Yeah. Like they grow... Like they get bumpy. They grow horns so that they look like coral. Yeah. Or they'll like be flat. And also they can like fit through the size of a quarter. Yeah. And they are like, you know, four mm -hmm. feet long. Yeah. And 30 pounds and they'll just squeeze their body yeah. through the hole. It's just, remarkable. It's insane. Yeah. They're like the closest thing I think that we have to aliens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least I, to like the aliens that I envision. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they have a giant head which is actually their body so, yeah i mean i found myself being terrified of octopuses and then simultaneously like she would like encourage you to be like not afraid of octopuses we just need to understand them and then she'd tell another fact and i'm like these things are terrifying <laughs> like, nah, i want one and i mean i'd like crazy, a little like oh, mini one what's crazy is you can own them i know <laughs> <laughs> like that kind of blew my mind and then i did some research and i was like can you really just buy an octopus yeah you can there's no restrictions on octopus is mm -hmm. Man, that's weird. 
there yeah there's no restrictions you can just buy them now apparently you like you need a pretty big tank for them yeah. like they can't just be in like a small tank yeah and you have to and, make sure they can't get out yeah and you have to make sure they can't get out and they don't play well with other mm. things so they have to be in their own tank so it is not the most efficient use of space in your house but mm. if you had a big house it would be pretty cool <laughs> it would be a cool it would be a cool pet to have, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, and they, like, crawl on your arm, and they just kept talking about, like... Yeah, just yeah. don't let them near your face. Why? They'll suck your eye out. That was, like, a whole section of the book about how they, like, can suck your eye out with one of their suckers. Well, yeah, they can. Yeah, so, he would, like, one of the instructors the whole time, like, in the beginning, there was, like, 15 minutes where he was, like, just don't let them near your face. <laughs> like, all right. Yeah, I guess that's kind of scary. But other yeah. than that, they're pretty nice, except for the guy that got bit. Yeah. By an octopus. Yeah, that was kind of tragic. Yeah. He said uh, it didn't hurt, though, after a while. Yeah. It was cool that they, like, had such distinct personalities. Yeah. That was one of my questions, was I felt like, I mean, watching my octopus teacher, I feel like they do have kind of distinct personalities, mm. but do you think that that's something unique to some animals and not others? Or do you feel like a lot of animals have unique perspe like unique personalities, but people just don't spend the time mm -hmm. around them? I don't know. Because in the book, they talk about how like lobsters have different personalities if you're around them long enough. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's also mention of like how many neurons octopuses have and how it's actually more than like rats, you know. And so it's like a substantial amount. So I don't know if it's like octopuses really are actually more intelligent than we give them credit for and so therefore they have like the more intelligent you are the more personality you have does that make sense yeah or if every living thing actually has a real personality a distinct personality and we just don't pay attention yeah i, I don't, don't know i don't know because at one point he started i mean she started Mm -hmm. Going off about fruit flies. And I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, that was a fruit bit of, flies. That's a bit of a stretch. She was like, yeah, some fruit flies don't react like other fruit flies, which means they have their own consciousness. I'm yeah. like, they live for like a day and a half, lady. Like, if their consciousness is anything, it's like hormones and that's it. Yeah. Do you want to go check on your kids? Yeah. Real okay, quick. one sec. All right, we're back. And we were talking about. Fix my shirt so I don't look fat. Um, animal consciousness. Yes. So do you think all animals have it? Again, she was a little extreme. Flu fruit flies, I don't know. Yeah. Cats, I don't know. But definitely like dogs and other animals. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I think I'd be willing to say that most do. Really? Yeah, I think I would. Okay. What do like, you think? Like farm animals and things? Oh, for sure, farm animals. Yeah. Ducks? 100%. Ducks? I love ducks. Yeah. I would have no, said no for like, well, I mean, I honestly, yeah. I, I, I agree. Like, my mom's got her weird chicken. She definitely has some fruit. She, she, <laughs> she definitely has chicken. some personality. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Stella Luna is her own little weird duck, mm. weird chicken <laughs> duck. I don't know what she is. Weird so. chicken. Yeah. 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 I think, I think so. I don't know where I would draw the line. You know, like ants. Dude, ants are cool because our kid got a ant farm for her birthday mm -hmm. and they're pretty sweet. Like, I don't know why we never had ant farms growing up. Our dad probably has they something like, against ants. They like dig tunnels and stuff and they yeah. like, they bury their dead. What? Yeah. So okay, they, so they, they must have a conscious then, like, right? I mean, I guess maybe they're doing that for like some other purpose. No, they like, they like pile up this area and then make it like a graveyard almost uh -huh. and then they'll when ants die, they will bring it to the graveyard and put them in it. That's wild. Yeah, dude. Ants are crazy. That's ants super are cool. super cool. Like yeah, way so, cooler than I thought. Yeah. Well, that's how I feel about bees because I've just been terrified of bees oh. my whole life. Yeah. Bees are cool. But they are so cool. They yeah. really are. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think a lot of things have consciousness. Not cockroaches. <laughs> Not cockroaches. <laughs> of the devil. <laughs> Obviously. And spiders <laughs> and cats. <laughs> I don't know. Some spiders are pretty cool. Really? I mean, I don't know enough about them, but I'm learning to get better with them. Really? Yeah. I feel a little bit bad now when I kill them. Hmm. Interesting. But I, I live in Alaska, so. So, yeah, <laughs> there's like no spiders anyway. Yeah. So then I liked the title of the book. It kind of gave me an interesting 
I don't know, it made me think a little bit. So mm -hmm. soul of an octopus. And sometimes, like, I don't know, consciousness and soul, I don't know, are the same things. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, What's the uh, subtitle of the book? I can't remember. Because wow. doesn't it talk about... That's like, like an exploration of consciousness or something. I think that's like the subtitle of it. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think so. Let me pull it up real quick. I don't think I have it anymore. Sorry. Just kidding. You have the book like right over there. I know, but I can't. I'm blind. Just reach it. <laughs> um, let me look because I think that is important. Yeah. What the heck? I mean, she talks about consciousness a lot in the book. Oh, my gosh. Soul of an octopus. If there was any service here in this whole joint, got it pulling up. But yeah, do you think souls and consciousness are the same thing? I guess that's another question because she seemed to equate the two. Mm -hmm. I don't actually equate the two. I think consciousness is its own thing and then your body is another and your soul is kind of the combination of that mm -hmm. experience. So it's a surprise, the soul of an octopus, a surprising explor exploration into the wonder of consciousness. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, so she does equate the two. Mm -hmm. quite, and, and I know that she talks about that because she talks about a couple studies mm -hmm. uh, that were done to like prove that, you know, different animals like flies and octopus and stuff, octopuses and stuff like have consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, she talks about how like it gives her hope that. Or not gives her hope, but it, it kind of affirms the fact that they have a soul too. Mm -hmm. But that just gets me thinking like heaven's going to be pretty packed. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? And like what does an octopus have to do to go to octopus hell? I mean, <laughs> how many choices are they making, I guess? How many conscious choices are they making, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Because I feel like we're the only, we've got to be the only, I mean, I don't know. This is what's always interesting. Because like then, what other type of species think about life after death? Because that really is to mm -hmm. me the difference between consciousness and a soul. Not, like consciousness is, in my view, more of like physical choices. Mm -hmm. Like do people make choices based on emotions, based on desires, based on, you know, just general, like, like the social. ability to have fun. Yeah, social, mm -hmm. environmental changes. Or are they completely programmed through, you know, like DNA, primitive. DNA yeah. primitive, like choices? Like, are we truly just the result of I mean, one could our argue, biology? Though, that we make a lot of choices through our primitive, like, needs, you know? So well, I think it, there, there definitely is, and I 100% agree that there is that aspect that is very important and leads a large majority of your choices. Mm -hmm. But, like, even as a person... Like as an individual, you make choices that are against your nature yeah. based on like social choices and things like that. You know, mm -hmm. things that wouldn't benefit you evolutionary or wouldn't benefit you survival wise. Mm -hmm. But yeah. still, you know, people choose because of either, you know, fun, leisure, social, environmental like yeah. aspects to it that, you know, make decisions. And I think that's kind of what this book was diving into with octopuses is that you know they would make choices that n normally naturally they wouldn't make you know yeah. they you know would be friendlier to humans and things like that that they had personalities they were mm -hmm. playing they were playing at yeah, some point playing. with the crabs you know what i mean like that yeah. that necessarily don't have to do with survival and growth and mm -hmm. everything like that but still are important and that to me is consciousness mm -hmm. and then soul is like eternal does that mm -hmm. make sense mm -hmm. like that to me is the so that's where, like, I think the soul is what your experience is in the body that mm -hmm. you're in mm -hmm. combined with, like, your consciousness. So, like, for an octopus, their soul is going to be defined a lot by the fact that they're in an octopus body. Mm -hmm. But they still have a conscious. A conscious. How do you say that? I can't say that now. But is an octopus soul eternal? Like, do you believe human souls are eternal? Yeah, I believe human souls are. I think octopuses are, too. Yeah, see, that would be, that, that's, that's whether or not I, they go to like, you know, are there like multiple creations and whether or not they're like, okay, you're an octopus, you leveled up. So now you get to go to a squid. I don't know. <laughs> like yeah. leveled down. I don't know. You made some poor choices. Yeah, I don't like, know. It's like the reincarnation of octopus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cause that's where, like, I wonder if there are any other animals that truly think about life after death. Cause like the ants yeah. to me is like an interesting thing. Like they do bury their dead mm -hmm. or, or at least group them together and create some sort of graveyard. I don't know if they're burying them necessarily. 
And it could be completely out of just like get these, you know, dead carcasses out of the way. We gotta yeah. work. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, Don't make it too far. It's gonna happen again tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I just I I don't know. That to me is a little bit more of an interesting question. That is an interesting question. That reminds me of when she was talking about in the book about animals dreaming mm-hmm. and about how that's like you can't deny that animals dream and that they have like memories and they have dreams about like playful events or things that happen to them and yeah. how like far away it is for us to even understand or comprehend what they could possibly be dreaming about because that's such an individual private thing, you know. But Jim dreams for sure. Yeah, like, like dude, dogs, dogs for sure. Dream. He'll like run in his sleep, or he'll like whimper, and I'll like yeah. come up to him and I'll pat him, and he'll like wake up and mm-hmm. then like go back and like to well, and sleep. It's not always the same. Like I can't say that like Barry always is dreaming about like running, or he's always like barking in his sleep. Like it's different every yeah. night. So like, what is shaping that dream so that you have like a different, you know, choice or reaction in that dream? Mm-hmm. I have no idea. No, and. Yeah, that's so weird. Mm-hmm. It's that's super such a, weird. It's such a weird thing to like. For me, I can see it with dogs because, like, mm-hmm. I've always just assumed Jim's going to be right there with me forever. Yeah. <laughs> you know As a I dog. Mean? As right? a dog. Yeah. yeah. But, like, octopuses, like, that one is weird to me. You know because, what I mean? Like, 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 where's heaven? Do we have an ocean? Yeah. I mean, because I've never pictured heaven with an ocean. Yeah. I mean, or even just like, endless amounts of animals like yeah. how many cows are there in the world and how many horses <laughs> and like cows like you know what i mean like it's just it just seems insane that like if mm-hmm. we do like if somebody truly does believe that the soul is eternal and then they like it's just like taking it one step further like if you believe the soul is eternal mm-hmm. and then you believe that all animals have souls then it's just like holy cow like how mm-hmm. like it all just kind of comes with us which i think is a cool thought because i do think animals are special yeah I like i too. i am a firm believer in like kind of that that intrinsic value and special like nature of Mm -hmm. animals and how important they are to us as people, but also like just how they, like they're important. Yeah. They're like a sacred thing as well. Yeah. They're important individually as well. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, an octopus is a weird one to, to become friends with, (laughs) but I wanted to kind of rattle off a couple octopus facts. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of wanted to dive into a little bit more of like, animals in general Mm -hmm. and like the the benefits of animals um because i thought that was another big theme of the book which is very similar to running with sherman which i read with mom Mm. but i think it is an important theme but i didn't know that octopus were the fastest growing animal on the planet isn't that nuts that is nuts they said they're like fully grown by like what three or four years yeah that's kind of a short lifespan for them to have like their total lifespan is five five to six years total yeah Yeah. and then they're done so yeah and they start off the size of a grain of rice. Mm-hmm. We had that fact multiple times in the book. <laughs> yeah. She really liked that fact in yeah. the book. But and, it is fascinating. I had no idea. And then they survive or like a full grown octopus can be, they can have arms as long as like six feet mm-hmm. long. So like 12 foot wingspan between two legs. And then they can be upwards. I think they said that the Guinness Book of World Records was 300 yeah. pounds and a span of 30 feet yeah. and it grew from a grain of rice to that and like in three, three years. Yeah, yeah. That's massive. If you actually like visualize like yeah, this slimy, like the, the scale, <laughs> the scale of that, like, cause obviously there are animals that grow bigger than that, mm-hmm. but they start bigger. You yeah. know what I mean? So they yeah. like multiply by like, you know, 10 X mm-hmm. of course across their lifetime. Like the scale yes. of like a grain of rice to 300 pounds is insane. Like mm-hmm. they're multiplying like tens of thousands X yeah. over the course of three years. Yeah. Like, that's insane. Yeah. That was, that I felt like was pretty cool. And all of these facts, like that, this was the part of the book that I really enjoyed. Yeah, I same. really enjoyed learning about octopuses. Yes. Um, and that they get other animals high from their ink. <laughs> That's how much the of, book was so funny. Yeah. How much of that do you think is true? I mean, I think it's pretty true. I feel like you think so. Yeah. You think there are octopuses out there just herding groups of oh yeah groups of crabs and then just inking them and keeping them in this state of high. Why not? It'd be entertaining. Was, I mean, if they need puzzles to play in like a aquarium or whatever, I mean that's like prime <laughs> entertainment, right? Like yeah. It was interesting. She was saying that like, what was the drug that was in there? It was like similar to. I, don't I know it had, called. it had like that their ink has, uh, what's it called? What's it called that you need? 
Like when you get high. Like <laughs> from cannabis? I don't know. It's like dopamine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So it had like dopamine in it and it had like a bunch of other things in it, but it literally like mimics. So like she was saying that the the ink itself would make crabs feel like they had just eaten mm. and so that they would not be hungry anymore. And so that they would just hang out around the octopus and the octopus would just kind of ink them and they'd feel like they were just having a good time eating the whole time. That's super interesting. Yeah. I'm and surprised someone hasn't like. Done a bigger study. Yeah. On that. Or tried octopus. Yeah. I mean, that's what I was going to say, but I mean, I'm sure like animal rights, that's like not okay. But, but I'm shocked. I mean, honestly, yeah. that's not a thing. Yeah. That, that part was really interesting. Because it's not like ink. Like inking doesn't hurt them, right? I don't think so. They have like an know. endless supply of ink. I don't, I don't know. know. I, that, that she didn't go over. <laughs> she just went I over the facts. I wanted more facts. Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. liked the facts section yeah. because, again, like that whole part was really, really interesting. The mm -hmm. growth of an octopus was really interesting, but the um, yeah, again, the scuba was not. <laughs> the one part that I think was my favorite part about octopuses that I've learned mm -hmm. was that their consciousness and their like neurons, like our brain was equally distributed across their yeah. legs. Yeah, like in their skin. Yeah. yeah. So like for us as humans, our nervous system and everything that makes our body move and twitch and like think and need like to survive. And smell or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's all processed in the brain, mm -hmm. which is all right here. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that, you're done. So <laughs> like you're gone. Yeah, don't hurt that. <laughs> yeah. So you need your head. For an octopus it's equally distributed across their legs and in their body. Mm -hmm. So she was saying that there have been studies done where you could just like cut off an arm mm -hmm. and it would still function properly. Not like a chicken with its head cut off where it's just like yeah, waiting to die, but it would still like go and grab food and then mm -hmm. move it towards where the mouth would be as if it was still just like performing its actions and living mm -hmm. as an arm. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah, it was nuts. And the idea that, because I think this was a similar section, that they're colorblind. And mm -hmm. they're like, as far as like what they would say their brain is, right? Or like um, when they have looked into their retinas, because they have similar eye, eyes that we do, which is also weird to think about. <laughs> like yeah. that They have like this dominant eyeball that, you know. Oh, yeah, they have you. one dominant eyeball. Yeah. <laughs> they but, like follow you around with one eye. Yeah. Yeah. But um, that their eyeballs are technically colorblind. They don't have the... RNA or in their retinas to be able to see color, but they haven't, they've recently have discovered that it might actually be in their skin. So their skin is what's actually like seeing the color for them so that they can match their surroundings and do like their light shows on their skin. Yeah. They also taste with their skin. Yeah. yeah that's insane. Yeah. And like super sensitive tasting. Yeah. Cause like they could taste like what's in your blood. Yeah, like, like the, the, from the, like their suckers, right? Yeah, they were saying that like some lady came in and pet the octopus, and she he was a smoker, mm -hmm. and she said the octopus like immediately detached mm -hmm. and like didn't want anything to do with her. Yeah, whereas like they had had tons and tons of guests come in and out, in and yeah. out, in and out, and they've said that like it well, was, and that one instructor changed her medication, and mm -hmm. that's what caused it. But like that's even like internal, you know what I mean? Like yeah. she noticed the change of something internally that she was like, I don't like that. Yeah. 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 Octopuses are crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I honestly couldn't like even wrap my head around what it meant that an octopus is basically one giant brain. Yeah. Like I just, I still don't necessarily get that. And I mm -hmm. also don't necessarily get that you can cut off an arm and it will just regrow it. Mm -hmm. Like if you cut off part of my brain, I'm drooling for the rest of my <laughs> life. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like yeah. I am no longer functioning. I will have a bib and Olivia will change my diaper. <laughs> like that is what happens if you cut off part of my brain. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, an octopus is one giant eight tentacled brain that stretches and at the same time can regrow parts of its brain. Can regrow like, parts of it. Yeah. The other part that didn't I didn't really get and it, again, I'm just I need like an octopus brain because I'm really dumb is that <laughs> They said that they could have different personalities with each arm. So because they yeah. had like all of the neurons and stuff that came that were specific to the arms that can live separately, that they found that octopuses will have arms that like they'll have a shy arm and mm -hmm. like a bold arm. 
So like an octopus will be laying there and one octopus will basically like the one arm will always go and like explore and it never changes which one goes and explores, but it's not specific. Like it's specific to each octopus. Like, yeah. So if you, do you think if they like cut off an arm and then it regrows that arm, do you think it has the same personality that it had before? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> Isn't that crazy to think? Like, yeah. And that's so weird. I have weird. no idea. Because I have one personality, thank goodness. Yeah, and my limbs have no personality. Yeah. Some women have more than one. Yeah, but... you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't manifest itself in like, could you imagine if I had like one arm that liked to play basketball and one arm that just liked to go swimming? Like, yeah. what would I do? <laughs> you I mean, know? I guess we have some taste of that when we have like our dominant like writing hands, you know. But I would equate that more to the eyes. Like they have one eye that they favor. I don't have I arms that have true. different personalities. You know what I mean? Like I don't yeah. have an arm that's like, I'm going to fight you. And then the other arm's like, well, just don't involve me in this fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I don't want to use this Yeah, one. yeah. You know what I mean? It's all enclosed up here in my head. Yeah. You know, like that's yeah. so weird. It is really weird. It's such a weird thing to think about. And mm -hmm. also, I don't know. Do I don't know. I don't know how like much. I don't know. Consciously like aware that that's like the personality. How much do you think an octopus like thinks about that? I don't know. I also don't know how you test that. That's the other thing. Like, yeah. Like how much of that is actually true? I mean, it's all cool facts and that's what made the book really interesting mm -hmm. and you can kind of observe it, but it's really hard to observe. Like the inner workings of the brain. Yeah. I mean, I could look at somebody all day and I have no clue who they are. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I've lived with people for years and been like, I still don't know what you yeah, think. Like you still know? shocked at what yeah. goes on up there. We can communicate verbally and I still have no idea what you're thinking, <laughs> let alone an octopus. Like that's one of the things that like when they talk about all this consciousness and like these arms and stuff like that, it's really cool facts and I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool if it's true and like some things can be observed, but also like, I don't know. I barely understand people. Yeah. You know, but I'm also well, an idiot. Yeah. I think it, it's interesting that she explained that like they have more neurons and therefore like are able to make more connections and think things more complex than rats. And yet we use rats for like all of our human studies. Mm -hmm. Like, why are we not using octopuses? Yeah, I don't know. Like, Also, yeah, I have no idea. They're, <laughs> they're mean, like, probably be a little more complicated. They can like get out of everything. But, yeah. They're like wicked smart, like weirdly wicked smart. Yeah. And they also are kind of dumb at the same yeah. time because like the one octopus that they had in the book, because mm -hmm. they have three octopuses. So they had the one at yeah. the very beginning who dies pretty early in the book. Mm -hmm. That was like the first one that she met. It was already old. They have the one that has babies and mm -hmm. they have the young one. I guess there's four. There's four because there's the one that dies pretty quickly. Yeah. So there's one that dies pretty quickly. The one that has babies and lasts mm -hmm. the very end. The one who dies pretty quickly and out of the, that gets transferred to the bucket at the very end and then the one at the very end that replaces all of them mm -hmm. and it's the new octopus for yeah. the for the whole place and there's the one that dies pretty quickly so they can't be that smart so octopuses can get out of anything apparently <laughs> they're like little macgyvers mm -hmm. and there was like apparently this giant display that they were having because they were doing renovations on the like big tank yeah. yeah renovations on this whole Aquarium, aquarium, but mm -hmm. they didn't want to transfer anything out. So they like makeshift tanks. Seems smart for an octopus. Yeah. And then they were like, you know what? I think that this one is sealed. So they throw this octopus in there and the next day they found it like dried up on the ground dead yeah. because there was this tiny little hole the size of like a nickel mm -hmm. that it pushed its body through, walked around and then eventually dried out and died. Yeah. So like, I mean, how smart can you be? I mean yeah, not that smart. <laughs> so, I mean, just stay back. And then they were also saying like there were open, hey, there were open, there were open pools of water everywhere because yeah. there were just displays with fish in it, and they could have just hopped in an open display. Yeah, actually, why is that not like? And they said it's instinct, she, like turtles go to water. Right? Yeah, she like, justified it in the book by saying that she was just like really curious and like wanted mm -hmm. to like learn all the different things or whatever. Yeah, it's like, was, or it's just really dumb. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like how smart can you really be? Yeah. So like I don't know. This is where I'm like, I don't understand animals. Yeah. I think you need one so that we can observe it. I need an octopus? Yeah. Dude, our kid would freaking love it. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. You'd have to be like really careful though. That yeah, that the tank was like biter. Yeah. Yeah, that too. Yeah, and that the tank. Are the beaks, and since you watched that documentary, maybe you know more than me, are the beaks hard? Yeah, it's like a bird beak. Yeah, I remember her saying that, but then like how does that squeeze through a nickel? I don't know. 
You got I me was, there. Yeah. <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> I was thinking about that, like laying in bed. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> maybe they're really small or maybe they like collapse. Well, that's why I was wondering if they're like cartilage. Although I guess like babies' heads can like move when they like are born. So maybe it's something like that. Yeah, I have no idea. You got but, me there. Yeah, that was like keeping me up at night. <laughs> I guess <laughs> nice. I could have Googled it. Um, the other thing that she talked about that kind of blew my mind was, and this was after one of the weirder sections of the book, <laughs> which was just the giant octopus porn festival that happens <laughs> in in uh, Seattle every year, apparently, uh -huh. which I guess for those watching, it's not an actual octopus porn <laughs> festival, but it kind of is. Apparently every year there's this aquarium in Seattle. Seattle. Where they all get together and they get a female and a male octopus. Mm -hmm. and it's like a big deal. And they just watch a mate. Watch a mate. Yeah. And it like when I say it's like a big deal, I mean, there were like thousands of people mm -hmm. that come to watch this. And yeah. it's like school, like elementary school field trips were yeah. there. And they're all just like, woo, let's yeah. get it on. Like, think about any other animal would be like the chimpanzees at a zoo. Like, <laughs> yeah. no, like and they were like, she's like, yeah, right before we let them, like we open the divider to get them in or like, they're like blasted Marvin Gaye, like, yeah. let's get it on. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, so weird. I was like, this is really awkward. Yeah. But also that whole process was really crazy. Mm -hmm. But the sea slugs also kind of blew my mind. Yeah. You know? Did you remember that part? No. That they have male and female organs. Uh-huh. And they do it at the same time to a, a sea slug. <laughs> <laughs> and they both get pregnant. Wait, both male and female? So well, there are no male and female. They oh, have they, they just male are both. and female yeah, organs. Okay. And they like do them at the same time. What? I don't remember this part <laughs> at all. I might have like zoned it out. <laughs> I was like, this is... Yeah, and then the male sex organs just yeah. then fall off. And Lovely. Then, and then they're just laying And then they're eggs. just like laying eggs everywhere. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah. It's actually really efficient though. <laughs> <laughs> like when you think about it. Yeah, imagine if you and Rob could both have kids. <laughs> no. You guys would have. Okay, uh, problem. You guys would have 30 at this <laughs> point. Gee whiz. It's true. <laughs> Probably. Um, yeah, so no, all that's of super weird. All of the the reproductive stuff was weird. Mm -hmm. Like that was a weird section of the book. I mean, it's an important part of understanding, I guess, the life cycle. Because like the way that octopuses have eggs, like with the weaving, like where it's like a grapevine, that mm -hmm. was like super interesting to me too. Like, yeah, and the fact that they can have sex with another octopus and then they just store the sperm. Yeah. For an, a rainy day, an unknown amount of time. Like it's different for every octopus. Some people yeah. store it like a little bit, and some people store it like not a lot. Yeah. And like the octopus that they had at the at the aquarium mm -hmm. originally, they didn't even know like, that it was impregnated. Well, like had sperm or whatever. Saved. Yeah. So yeah. they were just like, she's gonna lay eggs, and you know. Maybe, maybe not before she dies. We don't yeah. know. And yeah. And then she ended up doing it and they were like, yay. Yeah. But yeah, that is wild. Yeah. That was weird. Yeah. Yeah. So that whole scene was a little bit interesting. I don't think that that's a festival that I will ever be attending. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you get an octopus and all of a sudden you get like super into it. <laughs> yeah. I'd have to get like really into octopus if I'm like <laughs> going out of my way to go watch. And they were like. She was like interviewing people. They're like, we come every year to watch yeah, that's, the octopus. I that's like a once in a lifetime <laughs> thing. If you need to do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not something need. that you're like circling on your calendar. Like two octopuses doing it. <laughs> Thursday. You know I, I mean? look forward to it every year. Make t-shirts. Yeah. yeah no it, it was a weird event. It was. For sure. But yeah, that was one thing that I was like, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And that was really most of the facts. Like mm -hmm. there were yeah. some sections that were pretty fact heavy and then she would kind of just go back into her story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, I wasn't a huge fan of the story outside of, again, the, the physical connection between animals. animals and people. Yeah. Agreed. But I do think that that was an important point of the stories. Um, and that part I would definitely leave in the book mm -hmm. because I personally do think that animals are important and that they do help people, especially people like emotionally. Mm -hmm. yeah. And would you agree? Because I don't. And like, how long have you agreed? 
How long have I agreed with that statement? Yes. Like, is that something you've always found? Because you were never a dog person growing up. I was never really an animal person growing up. No. You never, like, I mean, we had dogs all growing up, and you were like, cool, they're there. Yeah. They're kind of cool. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. um, But I feel like you've turned into an animal person. I have. Yeah. Is is it because of that connection, or what is it that made you go from, like, yeah, we have two dogs, to, like, yeah, I want a pig and a goat <laughs> and some chickens and we have some ducks cats and, and ducks. And yeah. All yeah, the things, all the yeah, things sheep, that now you guys are so like <laughs> looking at kind of getting yeah. like where, why did that change? Um, well, I know when it changed, we had our first dog once after we got married was Ralph. Oh, Ralph. I know. Love Ralph. And he was a great dog. And was super connected to him because we didn't have babies yet. And then I got pregnant and he like snuggled every day in bed and he was my baby, you know. And then I had kids and then a dog was kind of annoying, you know, (laughs) (laughs) because I had to take care of kids and he like still wanted that attention. And then tragically we moved, decided to move and we couldn't take him with us. And I like mourned like he died for like two years. That was such a hard And I didn't think it would be because, again, I had kids and wasn't as, like, attached to him as I was. And it was a really difficult decision. But it wasn't until, like, I would come home the next, like, two weeks and, like, he wasn't there that I was missing his companionship that way. And so that's when it changed for me where I was like, okay, I think animals are really important and they they do play a huge role and their personalities offer a lot more companionship than I ever gave credit to. So... And have you seen that in your kids? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because they they were really little when that happened. Um, And I think they remember, like, the memory of having him. But now they're pretty connected to our current dog, Barry. And then we got cats, and the cats are, like, the best things in the whole world. I love the cats so much. Oh, yeah. I see cats are the one animal. Oh, no. Like These cats are amazing. Really? We're, did we have him when he came up? I don't think we did. No, no. no. When we came up, I mean, you guys. Like, I think were we were talking just about it. Barely getting into the house. Yeah, yeah. No, the the cats are like the coolest cats in the whole world. I really? love them so much. Yeah, and the kids have taken a lot of. I mean, I think everybody would agree that animals teach a lot of like responsibility, you know. And mm-hmm. so that's primarily what part of that was a lot of the reason why we got the cats. Um, but it just reaffirmed to me that like every single day we like to go and talk to the cats and like pet them and they welcome us when we get home and they're just companions in a way that like growing up with our dad, I never thought cats could be. Yeah. And so it made me like question every animal. Now I'm like, okay, wait, what animals do I think are like actually, you know, useless and Mm -hmm. how could I possibly connect with them? And, um, I mean, before that it was we wanted a bunch of animals mostly to be like sustainable farm you know but Mm -hmm. now it's it's definitely companionship as well I think it's good yeah I think I think kind of that first step like you were saying the first step is that responsibility the responsibility for something other than yourself and Mm -hmm. I think you can find that in other things obviously a family is Mm -hmm. the kind of the pinnacle of that you know you're responsible for kids you're responsible for other like beings other than yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is the most worthwhile way of achieving that and probably the most important thing that people can do in their life is kind of get to a point where they, you know, feel ownership of something other than themselves that's greater than themselves. Mm -hmm. And that is the most worthwhile goal. But what I will say is I think you can achieve that to a small degree Mm -hmm. with animals too. It's not quite as powerful as a family Mm -hmm. and that's coming from somebody who like literally loves my dog as family (laughs) and like he sleeps on my pillow and he's the greatest thing since I spread it and I think I've always I've always been like that with dogs like our dogs growing up and everything like that I always felt really connected to them Mm -hmm. but since becoming a dad like it's it's a whole nother level yeah but animals are like that great first step. Yeah, like it's, appro- an, it's an approachable way to learn that skill. And like, absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's a great way for kids to do it because mm-hmm. obviously kids can't start families or kids kids shouldn't start <laughs> families. Like, let's be honest. So you're ready to take that responsibility. It's the greatest step you can take, but also take it when you're responsible. Yeah. So, but it is a good, great way for kids to get that. Like, yeah. we 
really try to involve our kids in gym. Mm. We do want other animals too, definitely. But our stupid HOA is like. You could probably get cats. We could, but. I don't know. I think I know someone that you know that has cats. <laughs> That's trying to get us to take a cat home tonight, actually. Yeah. And it will be so loved. It would be so loved. I think, <laughs> I think, I don't know. Does it have a name yet? Yes. That's the problem. Yeah. But we were going to name it Sprinkles. Oh, cute. <laughs> After the office, obviously. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> uh, Is it white? Yes. Yeah. See, <laughs> duh. See. But, um, but no, I think it's important. We've we've tried really hard to involve our kids into that because it, I think it is like it's the first real lesson that you can learn from animals. Mm -hmm. And now I don't think it's the last lesson. Like I don't think that it's that's like the, the pinnacle, yeah. the pinnacle of your relationship with animals. But I do think that that's important. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. And outside of that, kind of the next bonus thing that I've seen with animals is kind of that that kind of emotional stability that comes from animals, mm -hmm. which is crazy because that was another thing that, you know, kind of started thinking about in this book is, you know, when you start contemplating whether animals have souls and their personalities and things like the stability that comes from animals, I just kind of hope that like instability doesn't rub <laughs> off from humans to animals because humans are super inst insta unstable. Yeah. You know what I mean? But is that something that you've seen benefit your kids at all? Because mm -hmm. that's one thing that oh yeah, I've seen one change Olivia's life for sure. But I've also seen that really change our kids' life mm -hmm. is the, the stability, kind of that every, I don't know, that comfort that comes from animals as well. Yeah, yeah. Their animals are just, I mean, most animals that I know are very forgiving and like just loving all the time. And so... Mm -hmm. I think that that offers a lot of comfort, you know, especially when you're living in a world with unstable people. But I've definitely seen that. Our daughter, our youngest daughter, has outbursts all the time. And that's the one thing that calms her down, hands down, every single time. We're really? like, you want to go see the cats? And immediately she will be like, yep, she'll go get her coat, she'll get her shoes, and it will calm her down. If it's two in the morning, we're going out to see the cats, and hopefully we find them. But <laughs> <laughs> Because they're outside cats, so they are great outside cats, but, um, yeah, it's the only thing that calms her down. We can do all the other things in the world and it's the cats 100%. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That was the part of the book that I felt like outside of the educational aspect and kind of the contemplation of, you know, where animals mm -hmm. consciousness and soul lie. Yeah. It was the stories mm -hmm. of that in the book, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It left a lasting impression that I think I'll be thinking about for a while. And mm -hmm. whenever I interact with other animals, I think I'll pay more attention to, you know, their personalities and try and understand more, you know, about them instead mm -hmm. of just passing them by like, you are an ant <laughs> or yeah. a snail and you have no meaning, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely, I thought it was a good book mm -hmm. in that regard. There were definitely some, <laughs> some other things that could use an editor, but... Yes. So what would you rank this book on a scale of one to five for importance and one to five for fun? Okay. Um, okay. So I almost want to say four for importance, Okay. which I know is really high, but we homeschool our kids. And I think it's really important to find books that can teach kids interesting facts that aren't textbooks while still having like an underlying story because you retain that information better. And this fits the bill, even though some of the stories were like obnoxious, like a little bit too much, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it wasn't a difficult read, you know, and I'm definitely going to remember these facts about octopuses a lot better than I did, you know, from my high school marine biology class. <laughs> that apparently I remember nothing about octopuses from. Yeah. Um, so I think it's important. And I don't know that, it, I don't know, maybe like three and a half, four. I don't know that it needs to be this book, but I think it is important that people read some books that teach them like how to be more aware of other people's experience or other animals experiences outside of themselves. I think we live in a tunnel a lot of the time caring mostly about ourselves. And this kind of gets you out of that frame of reference, you know, and mm -hmm. gives you more wonder for the world we live in. So, so do you have other books like this that you've read for homeschooling? Cause we really want to homeschool. Mm -hmm. I think the world is just crazy. 
you know, I don't think you can trust people with your kid's education yeah. anymore. And I don't really need, I don't know. I We can facilitate social, like social <laughs> aspects through, you know, extracurricular activities, honestly. Mm -hmm. And I, we're... We're not like set set on it, but I think we're we're definitely leaning more and more towards that. Mm -hmm. And so part of this podcast has been, you know, just me personally learning from books for mm -hmm. the first time ever so that I can also try to, you know, help our kids mm -hmm. develop that ability too. And that was one thing that I did love about this book is I, again, I mm -hmm. felt like this would be a sweet just, you know, assignment for a biology class or, you know, something yeah. that would teach you something, but also be a little bit more memorable and a little bit more fun. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you can, you can learn more than just facts from this book. Yeah. You can learn a lot of that emotional intelligence as well that comes from animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But are there any other books that you'd recommend that do something similar? Have you found those with your, with your homeschooling experience so far? The only other one that I've read is The Sound of a Wild Snail Eating which mm -hmm. we read for book club actually. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a lot shorter. So I appreciated that. It was a little quicker to, I don't know. You only need so long of a book on snails probably, but um, I actually thoroughly enjoyed it. If you're looking for another book that gives mm -hmm. you like that naturalist, you know, feel. Yeah. I really liked that one, but it's, I mean, we built like a giant bookcase in our house and it's my goal to fill it with books that I feel, I think that our kids can learn a wide variety of things about and it not be filled with textbooks because I mean, everybody reads textbooks and everybody forgets them like hands down. No one yeah. remembers them. And so if I can steer away from that, then that's what I'm going to do. And I think that this book fit the bill, you know? Yeah. Were there any other like books like, like this, you know, that would, I guess, end up on your book? your uh, homeschooling bookshelf that not necessarily have to do with like naturalism that you would recommend? Like, even if it's oh, just gosh, like, you're like putting me on the spot, I know like historical <laughs> or anything like that that you felt like, you know, really could benefit. I'm not going to your have, kids like, education. Memory no, of them. no, my okay. mind is blank. Your That's why I have good reads. <laughs> That's why you have good reads. The yeah. world's worst yeah. social media app. It is the worst, but I mean, it serves its purpose, I guess. <laughs> That's what everybody says. <laughs> like, this is terrible. Yeah. Um, so what would you rank this book then on a scale of one to five uh, for fun? Okay, fun. If you take out the scuba part, it was much more fun. I mean, <laughs> probably like a three. I, I don't like ranking things super poorly unless I'm not going to finish it. And I, I would have finished it had we not even been doing this podcast. Mm -hmm. I did listen to it on audio. And it's the author that's reading it. Okay. Which is kind of annoying because <laughs> she's not a professional, you know, and you can hear, you can hear pages turn. Yeah. And audio narrators make all the difference when it comes to audiobooks. And she like would put inflections on certain things. And I'm like, that's a weird place to do that, you know? And so I just, I didn't love that. And she also talks really slow. So I found myself like listening to it on like two times speed just so I could like, feel like it was a normal yeah she talks, she talks really she talks slow. so slow like i think usually i listen to books somewhere between like 1.3 and 1.5 mm -hmm. and i'd listen to this one almost it, it might have been like 1.75 or 1.8 or something like that yeah. because she was like so slow I was so like, slow like it's not even like a normal no person. it's not it was and i think that just comes from an experience of reading books and so mm -hmm. she probably was trying not to read too fast you know yeah which i guess is a good thing I can speed it up on the app. I can't slow it down, right? Not yeah, yeah, I think you can slow it down. Oh, really? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> anyway, but um, yeah, so I'd rank it probably a three. I read the first like two chapters physical form and I enjoyed that more. So okay. I would recommend physical form if anyone is going to actually read it. But, okay. Yeah. I think I would give it the same thing. I yeah. think a three and fun. Like it, it was a book that I would have finished no matter what. Mm -hmm. And it was a book that... The facts were super fun mm -hmm. and the subjects were super fun. Like octopuses are cool. Yeah, they you know are. I mean, like they're yeah. a neat animal that you don't run into every single day. But at the same time, there were it's really just the scuba stuff. Like, <laughs> like, like I, really. Any, Maybe it's because we've scuba. We were like so bored of it. But I mean. But this most of the scuba stories had nothing to do with octopuses. Yeah. No. It you didn't know what I mean? All. Like it had to do with her yeah. getting scuba certified, then her having trouble scuba 
scuba diving and then her doing scuba ventures, but never seeing octopuses until the very last one, mm -hmm. which I get is like cool that she saw octopuses on the very last time that she went scuba diving. It was a great experience, but like you even could if, have, even you could have just like, included that last one and talked about like, yeah. it was really difficult for me to get my scuba certification. This yeah. is why. And so seeing them meant a lot to me. And it was yeah. just like, you know, I didn't need a like, fourth of this book to be yeah. stuff that didn't even include any animals. It was like a good two hours of the book, I feel like. Yeah, that didn't have any animals. Yeah. It was just about her experience scuba diving. Yeah. And had she included like other like creatures that she was seeing while scuba diving, it would have been interesting too. Like introduce a couple other animals then. Like that's mm -hmm. fine. It doesn't yeah. have to all be octopuses. Like what do octopuses eat? Teach me about those animals. You know what I yeah. mean? Like that would have been fine. But yeah, it was just it was straight just... scuba in her ears. Yeah, scuba and ears, scuba and ears, like, scuba and ears. Yeah. Yeah. So I, that's why I would give it a three. And then mm -hmm. again, a four for importance. I do, I think animals are, you know, one of the most important kind of aspects of our earth, of our lives mm -hmm. as human beings. And I talked with mom about this on a podcast, but like, humans have always had animals, mm -hmm. you know, like our, our relationship to animals was always so close throughout mm -hmm. all of history. Like animals were how we got food, you know, like we, you know, our relationship to them was very intimate in the way that, you know, we ate animals, but then we mm -hmm. also used them for work. We also use them for transportation. We've also used them for protection. Like mm -hmm. animals have been a huge part of like the human experience for mm -hmm. so long that the fact that we've kind of automated all of that and removed ourselves from animals can only hurt us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like one, you're going against your your natural evolutionary biology of, you know, 10,000 years of being close to animals, but then also like you're missing another meaningful connection in your life that mm -hmm. is that kind of brings you out of yourself and yeah. i think those are the most important connections that you can have so i think it is important to realize realize the importance of animals in, in every form so yeah i mean obviously you know it's easier to do with dogs you know running with sherman was with a donkey mm -hmm. and that's you know a very stereotypical <laughs> stereotypical like work animal you yeah. know farm animal people have and experiences with those on a pretty regular basis but yeah. to do it also with an octopus mm -hmm. and to see that like you can develop those relationships and that comfort from really anything that you put the time in put the time in mm -hmm. and value equal or more to yourself you know what yeah. i mean like you have that you know love and connection with that yeah. it can reciprocate that value and you can find meaning i mean there was the one girl who you know was was suicidal mm -hmm. and you know she kind of came out of that because of kind of that that reciprocal love yeah. with an octopus. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. I know, crazy. it's like shocking, yeah. But it is, it's just a, such an important lesson that people really should, I mean, should learn. And mm -hmm. that also, you know, it's cool that you can do that with just about any animal. Yeah. So that's why I thought it was so important. Yeah. So, awesome. So uh, would you be on the podcast again? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah next time hopefully my voice is normal. Yeah, I know. You sound like you smoke like a pack a day. <laughs> Jeez. It was normal this morning. I don't know what to tell you. Was it? Yeah, I mean, normal-ish. Normal-ish. No, it was more, more normal more last nor night. <laughs> more normal than it is now. So. Yeah. But yeah, I would. I like okay. reading books. So I was about to say, yeah, you're definitely the most, yeah. the biggest reader in the family. Oh, Olivia. Well, I mean, outside of Olivia. Olivia's crazy. She reads. I mean, it's insane. She read a book. She already crushed her like goal on Goodreads. I looked last night. Dude, she read a book. We picked it up at the library on our way down here. She already finished it. Yeah. Lovely. And it's a physical copy book. Like, yeah. It's not even an audible. Did she read in the car? Oh, yeah, dude. She read like three-fourths of the book in the car and they drive down. Oh, man. I would throw up. Oh, me too. I can't I can't do book. that. Yeah. yeah. So she's cheating. <laughs> she's cheating. <laughs> you shouldn't be allowed to do what I'm not you allowed. You should not be able to. Yeah. No, yeah. Have you ever thought about writing a book? <sighs> no. You, okay. you, the only two people that I would ever ask that to, and I've asked Olivia on the podcast, mm -hmm. it, is you and Olivia because of how much you read. Yeah. I feel like you guys are some of the more creative people that I know. Yeah. That's touching. But yeah, yeah. Is that something you've ever thought of? Okay. Embarrassing moment. You've written a book. <laughs> yeah. Under a pen name. No, no, but. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were serious for a second. I was like, the next book on the bookly podcast <laughs> is. Absolutely not. No. Um, I have written a few different like, outlines of books and started a couple different books and I have since like 
probably middle school actually and i would just like keep them tucked in my journals and like not tell anybody really oh they were probably all trash but like yeah. what like what's the one that you were being like well maybe this one could be something well none of them that's why i didn't finish them <laughs> <laughs> come on there has to be one that you're kind of like this no. is a decent idea no there was one in like the age of like right before the age of uh like hunger games and what's that other one like maze runner divergent. and divergent and all those where they have like different cities that like never talk to each other and they're kind of like apocalyptic or whatever mm -hmm. um where <laughs> this was inspired by like us having to have our cleaning schedule um growing up this was in like yeah mi late middle school maybe early early high school where i was like there'll be a city that's like dirty city and there'll be a city that's like clean city and you're not allowed to like <laughs> cross like and dirty you're not allowed to clean they were like revolting against like having to always clean and then like clean city everything had to be like pristine the way that like you know an ocd father might like <laughs> to have things clean and so like while we would have to like clean our bathrooms i can like distinctly remember like cleaning mirrors growing up and like thinking of this book and like it would be about like this like you wanted this girl's wanted to like cross over to the other you know and then they find like the purpose of both and how there's like a balance and they can live peacefully <laughs> together nice. i i wrote a solid like seven or eight chapters of that like if it had been well written someone might have read it, someone <laughs> read it. Nice. yeah it could have been a children's book easily at least yeah like that actually could, that could be a children's book yeah like an, I've I never would, thought of that. That's I would like, I nobody would, steal that. That's mine. <laughs> I would ditch all the chapters and then just make it like a like a twenty page with illustration yeah, children's like book, book about cleaning. Or not chapter, but yeah, cleaning. That's a good idea. Yeah, I got to get on that before you like have a ton of people listening to your podcast. You have a while, so <laughs> no. <laughs> no, for sure. No, no, that's it. Like I, I'm not creative enough. I think to come up with good uh, character development and plots and things like that. Mm. I think I would be disappointed in my own writing yeah you know yeah, that'd be hard hmm. yeah interesting interesting yeah all right well i think that's just about it so okay. for everybody still listening at this point um please make sure to like comment and subscribe if you're listening on youtube if you are listening on a podcast platform please leave us a five-star review and we are still looking for guests so if you want to read a book with me and be a guest on the podcast, would absolutely love it. Um, please reach out either on Instagram or text me if you know me. Um, or get my number from somebody. Or <laughs> yeah, because because my circle of Just people who watch this podcast. <laughs> people who watch the podcast are pretty uh pretty limited at this point. And then if you could also share this podcast with any of your friends and family, that would be great because we're also looking for listeners. So, you know, just trying to get that out there, get more people reading, um, you know, enjoy and discover new books is always fun. So make sure to spread the podcast around. That's it. That's all I got to say. Cool. Thanks awesome. for having me. Yeah. Thanks for coming. <laughs>